a little town in, in the remote parts of, of southern province of Zambia. Not, I mean, I was born in London, needed to get a British passport, so a lot of us were doing that at the time. I had to be born in British soil to retain our British ancestry. Very good idea. Um, Choma is the closest town. We're not actually in the little town. We're 40 k's away from town, a uh, 40 minutes drive away from town. Down some roads, then there's a tree, and you take a right over a river, some rocks, take a left, knock on that door. That will invite you in for a cup of tea. So that's home. Um, I've also schooled in South Africa and, and consider um, this to be my home too. So, uh, but I am from Zambia. That was, that was home growing up. So my passion for wildlife photography is an in interesting one. I was, I was always curious about, um, I was curious about photography. Um, But I have more of a love for art, if I'm honest. I was terrible at art in school. I was terrible at all my subjects because I wanted to be. Um, but it's always fascinated me in all forms of art and sculptures, paintings, old cars, um, anything that someone had taken a, a long time to, to, to make beautiful. I had a lot of respect for. Um, and I went into guiding straight after school. I love, I love nature, I love the bush. So just, I think organically, the two passions came together and, and the bridge between them was photography. And because I've been curious about photography for quite some time, it, uh, it, uh, it took off and um, the fire burned. So I've been a guide for nine years now. 2010. What year are we in now? 2020. So it's more than nine. Ten. 10 years, hmm, wow. Um, all over Africa, various places, um, Tanzania, uh, did some fly fishing guiding Zambia, I was walking safaris and canoeing safaris, which are uh, fascinating and, and exciting sometimes, most of the time. Um, Namibia for a while, worked in Namibia, short stint in Zimbabwe, did a lot of work in the Sabi Sands, in various camps there, and um, now, with Wild Eye, uh, we travel quite a bit around Africa. So, so my 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 stint of, of permanent guiding in different sites around Africa ended in the Sabi Sands before I started work with Wild Eye. If I wasn't doing what I what I what I'm doing now, I'd be a photojournalist. Something I still wonder about about to to write stories, create stories using words and images to make a difference or to expose questions that the world needs to look at and answer. So I'd love to, I'd probably be that. Or I'd be a farmer, both. I'd love to grow stuff um, uh, in a sustainable way, in a method, in a way that benefits the world. I'd probably take Russell Brandt right now. Um, I'm listening to his podcast, which is fascinating. Um, and and uh, I think we'd have a couple good rants um, under a tree somewhere while waiting for some lions to wake up. My last meal, well, that's a good question and um, I'm probably only going to speak about this once because I'm currently on a no sugar, no carb diet, not even potatoes, not even sweet potatoes, not even but not. <laughs> anyway, um, for 30 days, little cleanse and so I'm missing a lot of those things so I'd probably I'll probably, I'm thinking now, I'll start with a tiramisu, start with it, big one like this big and that deep. And then I'll go into a big piece of ribeye, peppered, salted, potatoes, um, veggies, cold store, um, bottomless bar one milkshake in front of me that just gets topped up the whole time. And then for dessert, I'll probably smash another fruit trifle with cream and and sponge cake, yeah, a little bit. And then a cheese platter with some meats and some pickle. Smash that and then end it right there. For dinner guests, honestly, the first person on that table would be Winston Churchill, okay? Love the man, I love the odds he was against and I love how he 
presented himself and I think he must be an absolute hoot to talk to um, around a, a dinner table. And I'll also put Nelson Mandela, big fan of big fan of him and maybe he can teach me how to forgive a little bit more because I'm not so good at that. Um, and I think in terms of uh, feats of forgiveness, I think he's right up there with one of the most incredible ones in history. So amazing. Um, I'll have Kevin Hart there. Um, just in case Winston and Nelson Mandela get a little too serious and start talking politics, Kevin Hart can throw a joke down there, bang, 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 break it up. And then I'd have Elvis Presley for the entertainment. That would be my dinner. It's hard for me. For me, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of, of, of uh, I wouldn't say slower paced safaris, but I like when people get to connect a little bit with nature. So it's a toss up between the South of Angu and Zambia, Manapools, and the Makuleki province in Northern Kruger. If I'm gonna to have to choose one, I'm probably gonna choose the Makuleki. I just love it. There's a lot of human history there, very, very old human history, some of the oldest in Africa. They're all the way to recent wars that have been fought all over that border, poaching stories, the Ivan Trail, Incredible history that there's an energy there that no one can deny and it's full of wildlife and some of the most extraordinary beauty I've ever seen in my life. The destination? No, Monopoles. Actually, man, that's a tough one. That's a hard question. I'd probably say an elephant because it's just my favorite species to observe. Yeah. So by being my favorite species to observe, it's my favorite species to photograph. My word, seven weeks into lockdown. Honestly speaking, I, I, I haven't really uh, seen it go by. I've been really busy and really busy doing some personal growth and some investigations into the past and, and re old memories and stuff. And it's been a bit of a roller coaster, so it's gone really quickly. I, I, my heart bleeds for Africa and the world, um, you know, wild places especially. And I, and I really wish. We will just wear our masks and go back to work. <laughs>